This is a tale of three individuals, two of whom are childhood friends named Dan Walker and Joe Lynch. Joe's girlfriend, Parker O'Neill, accompanies them as they venture to a ski resort. Dan instructs Parker, saying, approach the ski lift attendant and explain that I left my credit card at the gas station. Let him know I have my two girlfriends with me, whom I promised to take skiing. Ask if he can provide us with three tickets for $50. Though hesitant, Parker obliges her boyfriend's request. Upon their arrival, Parker successfully convinces the ski lift attendant, sharing the story of the forgotten credit card and their desire to ski. The attendant grants them three tickets. The trio embarks on their ascent via the ski lift, but halfway through the journey, the lift comes to a halt. All the ski lifts at this resort are halted simultaneously, causing a commotion among the riders. Parker becomes frightened by the height and starts panicking. However, her boyfriend reassures her, urging her not to be afraid and promising her safety. After a brief pause, the lift resumes its operation. Eventually, the three reach the mountain's peak. They relish their time there, enjoying the thrill of skiing down at a leisurely pace. Once they descend, they head to a restaurant for a meal. Joe Lynch, however, finds little enjoyment in skiing, due to Parker's lack of experience, leading to frequent falls and delays. Consequently, they must pause and wait for her often. Nonetheless, Lynch yearns to ski once more. Although Parker is hesitant to join them, she eventually relents under her boyfriend's insistence. Upon their arrival, they discover that the lift for ascending the mountain has been closed due to an approaching storm. The attendant informs them of the closure and advises them against riding the lift. Despite this, the trio persists, and the attendant reluctantly allows them to board the lift. Thus, they find themselves ascending the mountain once again. At that moment, another colleague of the lift attendant approaches him. He informs the attendant that he needs to work on the upcoming weekend as well. He explains, my brother is hosting a party next weekend, and I have already applied for leave in advance. I won't be able to come to work. His colleague suggests talking to the boss if there's any issue. He then leaves to discuss the matter with the boss, leaving his colleague behind. Before leaving, he instructs his colleague, three individuals just went up on the lift. Keep the lift operational until they return. As he watches, he notices three people skiing down the mountain, realizing they are the same individuals his colleague mentioned. He decides to shut down the lift. Meanwhile, Parker and her companions, sitting in the lift, assume the lift has stopped on its own, similar to what happened during the day. They engage in conversation while feeling the increasing cold as the weather deteriorates. Gradually, all the lights in the vicinity start to turn off one by one. Fear starts to creep in as they realize it's Sunday, and if the lift doesn't start and no one comes to rescue them, they will be stranded until the following Friday. In desperation, they begin shouting loudly, but their voices echo in the desolation. Suddenly, they spot a snowplow approaching from below, prompting them to shout even louder. The vehicle stops right beneath them, bringing them immense joy as they reassure one another that they won't be left alone in this place. However, the driver of the vehicle is unable to hear their cries. In reality, he was on his way to pick up a colleague who works on the mountain. Soon, he receives a phone call informing him that everyone has left the mountain, so he should return. The driver starts driving the vehicle back, oblivious to the shouts from above. The three individuals throw their belongings down in an attempt to catch his attention. Unfortunately, due to the snowstorm, the driver's visibility is severely compromised. Eventually, he departs from the area in his vehicle, unaware of their presence. Trapped in the midst of a relentless snowy storm, these three friends find themselves stranded. With no help expected until the following Friday, the cold intensifies as nightfall descends upon them. Dan proposes a drastic solution, exclaiming, I have to jump from here, since no one will arrive for the next five days. However, both his girlfriend and friends strongly discourage him, insisting, let's wait until morning. Someone will surely come by then. Aware of the resort's closure and the absence of employees for the next five days, Dan feels compelled to make the leap. Fearful yet realizing they may be stranded for an extended period if all the staff has departed, he summons immense courage and jumps. Upon impact, the snow hardened, causing both of his legs to fracture. Immobile and in an excruciating pain, Dan remains grounded. His girlfriend and friend Lynch, still on the lift above, desperately desire to assist him. Lynch decides to hang from the cable supporting their lift, attempting to reach the pole from where he can descend and aid his injured friend. Struggling with each movement, Lynch's hands begin to slip, forcing him to retreat. Parker questions his return, to which he responds, warning her not to look below due to the presence of wolves. Understanding the dire circumstances, Dan urges his friend to prevent Parker from gazing downward, as he now comprehends that saving himself is futile. 
the wolves would attack if he attempted to move. Shielding his face with his hat, Dan becomes prey to the wolf's assault. Lynch and Parker are consumed by grief and shed copious tears, but they are helpless. Their friend, Dan, has passed away. Parker questions why they didn't intervene to stop Dan. Lynch retorts, are you blaming me? He explains to Parker that he had tried to dissuade Dan from his futile plan, but Dan refused to listen. Lynch reveals, you were his girlfriend, knowing him for a year, but I've known Dan since childhood. Now, I've lost my childhood friend. Following this, Parker expresses her apologies to Lynch, and together they mourn their profound loss. With the wolves still lurking below, descending is no longer an option for either of them. Having witnessed their friend fall victim to the wolf's attack, they are compelled to endure the entire night in the frigid lift. They spend the night conversing and eventually drift into a restless sleep, overwhelmed by their emotions. As the morning light breaks, Parker awakens to discover her hand unintentionally resting upon a rod in front of her. As she tries to lift her hand from the rod, she realizes it is firmly stuck, her bare skin frozen to its icy surface. In her attempts to free herself, Parker injures her hand severely. Simultaneously, Lynn stirs from his slumber, expressing concern for Parker's well-being. She reassures him, claiming to be fine, though Lynch notices her face has turned a deep shade of red. The harsh cold has taken its toll, leaving their skin damaged. Lynch reassures Parker that someone will surely come to rescue them once morning classes begin and they are missed. However, Parker doubts this possibility, convinced that nobody is aware of their presence in this desolate location. Lynch raises his voice once again, hoping for a response, but the vast expanse surrounding them remains devoid of any signs of help. Aware of his injured hand sustained during his previous night's efforts to save Dan, Lynch contemplates returning to the pole with attached stairs, allowing him to descend. Parker questions how he plans to accomplish this with an injured hand. Recalling the injury he sustained while hanging from the cable, desperately attempting to rescue Dan, Lynch emphasizes they cannot endure another night in their current predicament. However, with the sun now shining, Parker suggests waiting a little longer, hoping someone will arrive. If not, they can then devise an alternative plan. Thus, they sit together in the lift, patiently anticipating the arrival of rescuers. The nights bring piercing cold, while the days offer fleeting warmth from the radiant sun. Throughout the night, they remain seated in the same lift, enduring their circumstances. Urged by nature, Parker finds herself in need of relieving her bladder, reluctantly forced to urinate in her pants, while Lynch continues sleeping. As time passes, Lynch makes a decisive choice to cling onto the cable and reach the adjacent lift, which conveniently has a nearby pool for his descent. As he grasps the cable, a sudden jolt reverberates through the lift, caused by the slack in the cable. This terrifies Parker, fearing the lift might plummet downward. Assuaging her fears, Lynch assures her that such an event won't occur, successfully navigating his way to the other lift while suspended from the cable. During that moment, Lynch glances downwards and spots the returning wolves, the very ones that had ruthlessly taken the life of their friend during the night. Urgently, Lynch implores Parker to hand him the ski rod they use for skating, assuring her it will help fend off the wolves when he descends. She hurls the rod toward him, but unfortunately, Lynch fails to catch it, and the rod plummets to the ground. Determined to proceed regardless, Lynch recognizes they cannot endure another night in this perilous situation, risking succumbing to the frigid temperatures. With resolute determination, Lynch embarks on his descent, soon encountering the savage wolves. Amidst the chaos, he manages to secure the skating rod, and successfully drives the predators away. Lynch instructs Parker not to descend, and assures her that he will return promptly before he sets off from the scene. Now left alone in the lift, Parker remains uncertain about Lynch's fate, questioning whether he will return with help or if he is even alive. The entire day passes, transitioning into the night, yet Lynch fails to reappear. Parker must endure another solitary night within the confines of the lift. The following morning, Parker resolves that she must escape from this predicament by any means necessary, realizing she can no longer wait for Lynch. She ventures to leave the lift, but in the process, the lift mechanism breaks, leaving it suspended in mid-air. Hanging precariously by a thin wire, the lift gradually teeters on the brink of collapse. Sensing the impending danger, Parker musters the courage to leap to the ground, just as the lift plummets downward. Unfortunately, upon landing, the falling lift lands on her leg, causing a severe injury that renders her unable to walk. Undeterred, Parker initiates her descent down the mountain. As she advances further, she encounters a pack of wolves, yet they surprisingly show no aggression toward her. The wolves, having feasted on Lynch's remains, are satiated, sparing her from harm. Parker finally reaches a nearby road, but her exhausted state causes her to faint upon arrival. 
Fortuitously, a passing car spots Parker and her life is ultimately saved by the occupants. Parker endures the heart-wrenching loss of both her beloved boyfriend, whom she had hoped to marry, and her closest friend in a single night. And with that, the movie concludes at this point.